Hey folks, this is Sebastian. Welcome to the follow-up of our VFOX Home Lab Challenge video on resonance. If you have not seen the challenge video, watch it first because this one here is only the follow-up. So in the challenge we slowly filled the glass with water and had a look at the frequency spectrum of the noise it made. And to be honest, the question which I posed at the end, uh, whether the frequency changes linearly over time, was a little bit unnecessary because you could already see the result in the experiment shown in the challenge video. So here is what we measured in the video. Um, the white areas are the areas of the strongest frequency and you can clearly see that they have a clear curvature. And uh, of course you can also see this in the lower plot. Uh, where VFOX plots the frequency of the uh, strongest component. To understand this, we first have to look at something rather obvious, uh, because we used a constant flow of water. Uh, obviously, in our glass, the water level rises linearly over time. And this also means that if we have a look at the height of the air column above of this, let's call it uh, H, um, this height actually decreases linearly over time. This means um, that we could also relabel our time axis over here and say, well, this one is not a time axis, but an axis that gives us the height of the air column uh, with some place over here being zero when we actually filled up the entire glass. And uh, I cannot give you a unit for this axis because I did not do a calibration measurement if we measured how much uh, the water rises, for example, per second, we could also uh, give uh, a unit to this axis. But we do not really require one. What we now see is uh, also down here, we have the same axis, uh, which uh, could also uh, be called H. Um, we see that with decreasing, or if we look from right to left or from top to down here, with increasing height of the air column, the frequency is reduced. Still not linearly, but we'll get to this. So now what's happening while we fill the glass is that we create a lot of noise with a lot of frequencies. Um, so there would be all the frequencies in there that you can imagine, you could say. Um, but in the upper part, up here in the air column, some of these frequencies are amplified because they are in resonance with this, uh, yeah, with, with this tube. Um, when does this happen? Well, at the lower end the tube is closed. Uh, so we would have to have a node here, which is the part of the of a wave um, where there's a minimum amplitude or vanishing amplitude, so something like this. And um, yeah, if we now have any wave in there, uh, another condition for the open end of the tube is that we here have an anti-node. So that's the part of the wave with maximum amplitude. Okay, so something like this. So um, if we draw a center here, you see these are nodes. And at the bottom part where the water is, we need an, an actual node. And at the open end of the tube, we would need an anti-node, which is this maximum. And you can imagine that, uh, or you can, can easily see from the geometry, that the longest wavelength, or the lowest frequency for a wave that would match, or which would uh, fulfill this requirement, uh, would be a wave that has a wavelength of four times the height of the column. So, yeah, um, I think I do another smaller drawing here to illustrate this. So let's say this again is our glass. Um, water has arisen up to here. So we only have this height over here and a wave that matches this would have to start with a, with a node. So starting here and it would reach its anti-node just at the top of the air column. And then after that, well, yeah. It would continue. So this would be one wavelength. Physicists usually use lambda, lambda to denote this. And um, so what we can see here is uh, that the condition for this wave is that lambda is four times this column height. And then of course you can see uh, that if we look at shorter wavelengths and higher frequencies, this also works if um, the height of the column would match this anti-node. But then later on, if we continue this wave, the next anti-node. And this means this also works for uh, lambda being um, four thirds of the height of the air column, or lambda being four fifths of the height of the air column, and so on. Now to get to the frequency, we need the relationship between the frequency, the wavelength, and the speed of sound, which is simply that the frequency is uh, 
the speed of sound, we call it C here, uh, divided by the wavelength. And um, if we put our condition for the height of the column in here, um, we see that this would mean that we have C divided by 4 times the height of the air column, or we would have the frequency being uh, 3 times C divided by 4 times uh, the height of the air column, and so on. And in general, we can see the frequencies that we see are N times C divided by 4 times the height of the air column, with N being any odd number, so 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on. And these frequencies are the frequencies we see in our measurement. So if at any point in time we uh, have a look at the frequencies we see, then this is our frequency with n equaling 1, the frequency with n equaling 3, this would be n equaling 5, so yeah, n1, n3, n5, and you can barely see number 7 over here, and then number 9, and then we are out of the range of our spectrum. And overall, uh, as I was asking for uh, the behavior of the frequency over time, um, well, as a function of this height, we can say this is simply a 1 over h uh, relationship. So if you simply at some point plot 1 over h and h on the x-axis, you would get a plot like this. And that's exactly what you see if you put place the origin at the point where the glass is filled, um, then you get Exactly, let's see which color works on here. Get this curve with this being something like 1 over h with some factor in there and h on this axis. Coincidentally, Julian on Twitter just uh, posted exactly this experiment one day before we post the challenge. Um, and uh, here you see uh, his data, and it's quite nice to see that he matched up the frequencies up to n equaling 31, uh, and he also actually put uh, a numerical model of the frequencies on top of his measurement. By the way, the actual calculation of the exact frequency is a little bit more complicated, because at this open end uh, we also have to factor in the width of our tube, because it's not small enough, uh, the finite width is a problem there. Um, recently on our forum, some um, users from France uh, discussed a fun experiment where they used uh, the sound of opening, and I quote, a good bottle of wine. So by analyzing the sound of this when opening a bottle of wine, they determined the speed of sound, which again is based on a publication by Lutz Kasper and Patrick Vogt. Um, and uh, there you can also see the correction factors they need there. So if you want to see how to exactly calculate the frequency in a very similar situation, check out the link in the video description. That's it for this follow-up video, and I think this was also the last one of our home lab challenge series. But don't worry, we will be back with some regular experiments in our regular, more detailed format soon. Until then, stay healthy, see you then.